Thanks, everybody. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm Alice Jones. I'm a lead DevOps engineer at Liatrio, and I'm also a member of our platform engineering team. So I'm going to talk about how GitOps changes identity and RPAC management and sort of how to manage uh, permission boundaries across multiple systems from a platform engineering perspective. And let me check if I can see the timer. Uh, cool. So with that, I will uh, just kick it off. Um, so first of all, I want to start with some fundamentals. Um, permission boundaries are really important across multiple systems. And in a GitOps uh, setup with Argo CD, you're going to have multiple systems where you need to control these permission boundaries. So here I have um, you know, GitHub, I have Argo CD, I have Kubernetes, and I have different teams or different tenants color-coded separately uh, with permission boundaries between them. So in GitHub, these permission boundaries would take the form of like GitHub groups or repository contributors. In Argo CD, these permission boundaries would take the form of app projects. And then in Kubernetes, this would take the form of uh, Kubernetes native RBAC, like roles and role bindings. Um, and managing these is really important, as you might expect, but also keeping them in sync across multiple systems is also important. Um, for example, uh, if we broke the permission boundaries in Argo CD, you might expect that that uh, allows teams to hijack someone uh, else's Argo CD. And that's true. Uh, but it also cascades into other systems. For example, a misconfigured app project would allow teams to deploy into another team's Kubernetes namespace and uh, you know, potentially access their GitHub repos too. Uh, and this works across multiple different layers. Uh, a permission boundary missing in GitHub would have similar effects as well. So this is all kind of fundamental baseline stuff. Like, Hopefully, folks understand this, but if you don't, it's really, really important. Um, what I'm actually going to talk about is some more advanced situations where managing these and keeping them in sync is a little bit more difficult than you might expect. Um, and I'm going to talk about three of those cases and some ways to, to handle that. Um, so first is going to be impersonation. Uh, impersonation is a relatively new Argo CD feature. But it's really, really powerful for managing permissions and keeping uh, permissions in sync between Argo CD and Kubernetes. Uh, impersonation in a Kubernetes context lets one user uh, basically assume the role of another user and assume those permissions. And using this with Argo CD is really, really powerful because it lets us do something like defining a, a single role for a team or a group and then binding that same role to both an Argo CD user and to the human users that are actually accessing Kubernetes directly. And that means that when we change those roles permissions, we're actually changing the permissions for both and keeping them in sync without having to manage them separately. Um, this is in contrast to using like app project specific permissions, uh, which you might also want to use, but won't natively stay in sync between uh, the user permissions that exist in Kubernetes. There's also a secondary benefit of using impersonation, which is getting some of the benefits of Kubernetes native RBAC. One thing that might not be obvious is that uh, in Kubernetes, when you have the permissions to create a role, uh, you might think that that lets you escalate your permissions in Kubernetes. You can create a role with higher permissions than you yourself have. But Kubernetes, by default, does not let you do that. You actually have to grant uh, that permission specifically. However, a user that has uh, an app project permission in Argo CD to create a role can route their requests through Argo CD and use Argo CD's service account, which is likely going to have far higher privileges, to create the roles on their behalf without using the Kubernetes native controls that prevent this. Uh, and using impersonation can help shore up this weakness and kind of keep Argo CD in sync with what Kubernetes permissions do natively. So impersonation is number one. That's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, number two is token exchange. Uh, so what is token exchange? It's an OIDC functionality for uh, basically changing a token out uh, for one that's trusted uh, by a different source or issued by a different source. So what could we use this for? Well, 
uh, if we're in uh, a CI system like GitHub Actions or any other uh, system that will issue us OIDC tokens, we might want to authenticate to uh, Argo CD for accessing its API. Um, but uh, Argo CD probably isn't set up to trust our CI system because it's probably configured for authentication from human users. So by doing token exchange with uh, your IDP, in our case DAX, but uh, this would work in other IDPs that support it as well, um, you can basically exchange a GitHub Actions token, uh, which isn't trusted by Argo CD, for a DEX token, which is trusted. And this lets you access the Argo CD API in a uh, fully automated way in a CI workflow uh, and actually use that functionality for things you might want to do in CI. For example, uh, listing clusters or cluster endpoints, uh, initiating syncs or configuring sync policies, or doing automated rollbacks. The list is kind of endless. Really, anything that you might want to use the Argo CD API for, uh, you can do. But what's powerful about this is it lets us do this automatically, and it lets us do this using OIDC. The alternative would be using something like an API token, which is going to be implicitly tied to a particular user in Argo CD. And you're going to have to generate this manually uh, and rotate it manually, too. Whereas with OIDC, you get all the benefits uh, that you would normally get with OIDC. Um, but you have to kind of use this token exchange process to do it. So a really powerful way to kind of maintain this permissions uh, between your CI system, which in our case is GitHub Actions, uh, and Argo CD. OK. Uh, last piece I'm going to talk about. So I talked about impersonation. I talked about token exchange. Uh, now I'm going to talk about app projects uh, fundamentally. So um, this is just kind of a basic uh, pseudocode version of an app project. And there's kind of two ways that you have of defining an app project in Argo CD. You have uh, what I'm going to call the anything goes pattern, uh, where you just make everything star. And as a platform engineering team, this is great. You don't have to deal with anything. You don't have users bugging you about their permissions uh, being out of sync. But uh, obviously, there's some security concerns with this. Uh, teams are going to be able to deploy to any namespace. They're going to be able to deploy resources that they shouldn't be able to. Uh, and so that's just kind of bad overall. The alternative is the specify everything uh, you know, app project, uh, where we specify specifically the namespaces that someone can deploy to. We specify the exact resource types that they can deploy. Uh, and this is great. This is exactly what we want. But as a platform engineer, this kind of sucks. Because uh, when users come to me and they say, oh, I'm deploying a new resource type, I have to go edit their app projects. Or even if they're just deploying to a new namespace, I'm going to have to edit their app projects. And they don't have permissions to edit these directly because that would be a huge security vulnerability. So can we kind of reconcile these in some way to improve it? Hopefully. What we would really love is a situation where a team has uh, some resources that they're creating, like a deployment, a service, a config map, and they have an existing app project that has permissions to deploy these. And when they add a new resource type, like an HTTP route, that type of resource just gets automatically added to their app project. And this is actually totally possible. Um, the method for this is sort of a CI process that works as long as you store your app projects alongside application manifests. Um, and similar to a pattern where you render out uh, a user's application manifest to detect what types of resources they're deploying, you kind of take it one step further. You detect the resources they're deploying, and then you dynamically generate the app projects that correspond to this. So we use um, you know, customized KRM functions for doing this, but there's other automation potential here. Really, just any CI process that can do this could accomplish the goal. But the real trick here is a very logical code owner setup. By making an app team code owners of their own manifests, but making a platform admin team code owners of the app projects living in the same repo, you can use CI to automatically generate the uh, app project changes and just attach them to PRs. 
So if a team generates a PR that deploys a new HTTP route, we can detect that in CI, append the change to the app project, which will inherently require admin uh, approval of the change. And we can kind of automate this process for keeping these uh, changes in sync. So uh, that's my three things, and I'm just about to run out of time. Um, so those three processes kind of help uh, keep our, uh, our different systems in sync in a GitOps uh, setup and can help us uh, prevent issues uh, that we talked about at the beginning, where uh, you know, sync uh, permissions diverge between systems and cause us security vulnerabilities. So thanks so much. No time for questions, I think. But uh, I will be around and outside if anyone does have any questions or wants to dive deeper in any of these topics. Thanks.